going on, everybody? Shit. Episode 26 of the Lace Up Podcast. It's Sunday, July 11th, mm-hmm. right after the Euro Cup final. If you're wondering why I'm smiling. He's happy, this guy. <laughs> He's happy, this guy. It's coming home, in it. In it, coming home. It's coming home, in it. In it, coming home. It's coming no, home, in it. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> It's coming home, in it, in it, <laughs> in it coming home. <laughs> it's coming to Rome, motherfucker. It's coming to Rome, coming to Rome. That's just gonna be filled to the rim with tomato sauce. Mm. We eating out that bitch, bro. What would you put in that shit if you had it? Tea and crumpets, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Shut coming the home. fuck up, yo. <laughs> Someone stop this guy, yo. Ah, yo, when you're at the top, you can talk your shit. You can talk your shit. That's the beauty. That's why you wait till the end. That's why you wait till you win so you can talk your shit. Anyway, we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, we better. We yo, better. Listen, we got, we're we're going to have to. It didn't come home where it's never been before. <laughs> anyway, uh, stars of the week, brother. How about you start us off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my fucking start of the week, Giorgio Chiellini. Why fam. is Giorgio Chiellini your start of the week? Fam, fam, fam. Giorgio Chiellini see my man Saka. <laughs> my man Saka about to kill the Sheep. game. He was Bad about to yank it. Yaga. <laughs> Yaga. Yaga Saka. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, fam? What uh, do you mean? S- smart foul. Yeah, yeah, call that shit Very whatever you want to call it. Call Very that shit whatever foul. you want to call it, fam. Six minutes in the end. At the end of the game, stuck has one touch. He burns him. Yaga. Smart what foul. do you mean? My start of the week, man. Kilini, you my man's bro, but like, that was fun still. <laughs> <laughs> my start of the week, the man's Lionel, Lionel Messi. Honestly, I'm just going to talk about the Copa America like right now real quick because yeah. since I'm already highlighting Leo Messi as the star, I don't think, but like we know, we didn't watch the whole tournament so we can't go too much crazy about it, but we watched the final game. Shout out to Leo Messi. You know what I mean? The one thing that Ronaldo had over him that a lot of people were arguing the case for Ronaldo as the GOAT over him was the international uh, winning with the inter- international team. Messi's done that now. Um... We'll talk about their game like super quickly. Not much happened, you know. Di Maria scored a goal real early. Um, yeah. And then it was super, super physical, especially compared to Euro. Like the Euro we've been watching, like, damn, bro, they don't play out there. They were t- like, yeah, Neymar dives, but damn, they were also trying to murder that kid. They were Facts. trying to kill that guy. So, um, <laughs> so shout out to Messi winning, winning um, the Copa America, bro. Well, one thing to remember, we were watching the game too. At one point, Messi had a nice little run. He could have iced it, made it too. He could have killed it, yeah. At the and end then, of the game. then he got taken down, and we were literally sitting there. We're like, shit. If they don't, if they lose this game, he's gonna get eaten alive. But thank God they won. My man, Messi got his international championship. Finally, and long that's, overdue. That's why it's my star of the week. Uh, but yeah, that's enough about you know that Copa America. By the way, their, their production, <laughs> goddamn, bro. That's a, that's some Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Like, yo, yo, like, you see the animations in the Euro Cup, and you look at the animations of Copa America, and you're like, damn, damn, y'all need some funding. <laughs> like, y'all need some funding out there. Uh, but, yo, that's how we did the Euro. <laughs> y'all know what we did. Y'all know what we did. What'd you guys do? What'd you guys do? First off, I just want to say, do? I just want to say, shout out to all my haters out there. Or, sorry, not my haters, to all the, the Italian you know, the haters of the Italian national team. We we appreciate y'all, you know? It's it's fun. It's fun it's it's fun to win and just, you know, shit on y'all. <laughs> it's just, you know, you the the team gets shit on the whole run. You know, oh dirty divers, la la, lali, lilo. But wow. all y'all gotta all y'all gotta do is if y'all watch the tournament, if y'all clearly la, la. watch the tournament, the best team as far as structure Coaching, togetherness. It was Italy from the jump. Consistency. These guys did not lose a single game. The whole tournament. Qualifiers, nothing. They did not lose a single game. The team was tight. The structure was tight. The togetherness was proper. Like, those guys were brothers. We had MVPs who showed out. Players from the bench 
who did their thing. Players who came from the bench and took over. Buddy, and, you're speaking from the heart, are you? <laughs> I'm trying to be respectful, you know what I mean? I don't want to be that much of an ass. But, like, you know, like some sometimes these people, bro, like, they... they they, these Italian, these haters, bro. They 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 say some ruthless shit, bro. They say some ruthless shit. Like they can never just say like, yo, you were the better team. Nah, there's always an excuse, always a reason why, why we won. You know what I mean? The Belgium game, oh, flopping all over the place. Italy was the better team in the Belgium game. Yo, what are we talking about the Belgium game? You well, I'm just saying, Belgium. like, I'm I'm going through the whole tournament. You know, it's the end of the Fuck tournament. We're closing. That. We're looking at the whole thing. Nah, I wanna look. Day. I wanna look at Chiellini. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, either way, we, we the last time we had the pod, we didn't talk about the semis. So, like, you know, we had yeah. the Spain versus Italy game. That game, that was Italy's worst game of the tournament. They powered through. They probably deserved to lose that game. Danny Olmo came out there and he, he said, he said, I'm I'm tearing through y'all. I'm playing games with you guys. Like, you know, that was that was a tough game. I'm a, yeah, like, you know, and I would admit that Italy was the worst team that game, but that's the only game. Anybody come to me about Belgium or this game as well and says Italy was the not the better team? Like you're you're just wrong. Like I built, I watched the games. I could tell, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and then we had England versus Denmark. <laughs> Let's we'll we'll get into the, the the like people talk about Italy diving. We'll get into what like England's been doing this tournament. Mm-hmm. So we go back to the Denmark England game. <laughs> the freaking Sterling dives <laughs> in extra time to get the penalty for Harry Kane. The keeper saves it. Harry Kane picks up his own garbage. We find out later that English fans are putting laser pointers in the keeper's eyes. Like, yo, y'all are trash, bro. People talk about Italian fans being trashy, bro. Like, yo, England fans are trash, bro. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. You're worse. You're worse. You're another level. You're another level. Y'all are trash. But anyway, like, bro, the football world was happy that England lost. <laughs> the football world was happy that England lost this final game. I was reading through the comments on social media. People were like, thank God. Thank God. And that's shocking to me because I know Italy's been the villains of international football. But England never made it this far, excuse me, for them to be the villains. And they still had the audacity to say it's coming home. <laughs> but now they finally made it far enough. And I'm like, wow, there's actually a team. <laughs> that people hate more than Italy. I, I, I did think there'd be a day, but I guess we're the only team that people hate that actually make it deep in the tournament. But hey, England no. finally made it deep now. They, uh, they, didn't face, they didn't face anybody worthy anyways until then, until now. Exactly. So, so, yeah. so before we even start the game, I was telling you before the game, I'm like, I'm, ner- <clears throat> I'm nervous for this one because like everything's in England's favor. They're fully healthy. They have a deeper bench. Mm-hmm. They have like... They had an easier bracket. They made it. That's part of the reason why they were fully healthy. They didn't have to deal with any teams that were like like tough on their players. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also at Wembley, which like that's an advantage. You know what I mean? Like they they had they had fans there ready to boo the national anthem for the Italians. Boo the Italians coming up for for I mean like I'm um, spoiler alert pens and things like you know what I mean. Um, but going into the game, right off the bat. Luke Shaw, beautiful play, breakdown by the Italian team, scores early, two minutes in. Like, I'm stressing. Pressure. You know? I'm pressure. stressing. Pressure, pressure started off the bat, off the yeah. jump, off the it was, hip. Uh, yeah, that was a defensive mistake, though. Like I, I, That I'm was not, a bad I'm, defensive yeah, mistake. Yeah, that was, that was just yeah positioning and all that bullshit. Like, I'm not even yeah. giving England that much credit for that goal, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, they, like, Chiellini and Bonucci, everybody came up for the corner, and then on the counterattack, they finished. And, like, you know what, man? Like, <laughs> I think those two old dudes, they need to get their bodies a little warm before they can run down the pitch, you know? Like, that's yeah. tough right at the beginning of the game, running down the pitch. But, uh, yeah, so England scores right off the bat. It's a, it's a little bit of back and forth as Italy tries to collect themselves. And then, honestly, from the 30th minute onward, absolute domination. We yeah. saw at, around the 73rd minute, they put up the, the what the... I actually wonder what the final stats were for the game. Can you pull that up, KB? But, mm, yeah. um, but like, around the 71st minute, I think England had two shots, one on goal, which was their goal that they scored at the beginning. And uh, Italy, Italy had 71%. Possession, which is absolutely ridiculous, and then I think we, I think we were like, o for o for five or something like that. You know what I mean? I think I think yeah, we were like, dumb. I think we were like three shots on target out of five shots taken, like yeah. no goals. I mean, okay, so um, so so sixty six percent possession at the end of the game to thirty four. 
to 34, which is still yeah. dumb. Like, you know, 71 was just, like, absolutely ridiculous. This is just yeah. a... And that's mostly extra time where it started, like, you know, they started putting on, like, their substitutions, we're getting tired. Like, that's mm-hmm. where the possession changed. If that ended in 90 minutes, like, we would probably end it around, like, 70. Yeah, motherfuckers like, yeah. had 19 shots on target compared to six, though. Like, shit. So we had 19 <laughs> shots on target and they had six? Yeah. And y'all had... No, 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 no. Y'all had 19 shots, six on target. They had 19 six shots... Sh- and they had six no. shots, how many on target? No, no. And they had six shots and two on target. Okay, there you go. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, before the first half, I think, was the Chiesa chance, right? Like, when he when he ran it down and he shot on the yeah. right side and yeah. he missed wide. So, you know, shout out to Federico Chiesa. He had two great chances this game. He also had, like, a curve in from the left in the second half, like, where he walked in from the left, hit that shit with the right, curved in, saved by Pickford. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like great game by Chiesa and Italy was just Italy was putting pressure, man. We were controlling that ball. We took our time. We played the game at our pace. Carried the ball up to the box. Like then, then that's where the issue started. It came down to execution and finishing, and we were yeah. struggling. We got two free kicks. Insignia blasted that shit over the net both times. Um, in the second, I think both free kicks were in the second half, right? And they were in really good positions too. Like you shouldn't be missing those, but hey. So the pressure was on. England was still holding on to that one goal lead. Italy was putting all the pressure, doing all the damage, um, but couldn't finish. And then eventually, what was it? I think it was a corner kick. No, a corner for, 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 what? for the Bonucci goal. So I think it was a corner. There was a little scramble. Nah, I think that was a free kick. Look, yeah. Free kick? Okay, free kick. Sorry, so. free kick. Yeah. Like, it was a set play. One set play. I, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I think you're right, though. I think it was free kick. So free kick mm-hmm. into the box. Uh, a little scrambly, scrambly Coco in there. Chiellini goes for it with the foot. It bounces off. I don't know what. And then Verratti headers it off the post. And then Bonucci ends up finishing it. A scrappy, scrappy Coco goal. But we'll take those because we deserved it. We were dominating the game at that point. Like I don't, I don't think anybody would say that Italy sh- sh- like they didn't expect Italy to score because it like yeah. it, it looked like they should have been scoring for a while there. Um, and then that's it. We're tied one one, <clears throat> going into extra time. Uh, extra time, nothing, nothing too crazy. We had the the, the Saka pull down his kit is. <laughs> no, nothing, Kili nothing too crazy, down. nothing, nothing too crazy. Just the psych up right now. I mean, listen, man, like dirty play or not, whatever you want to say about it, like uh, I'll say it and I'll say it again. There was a smart foul. It was like he was getting burnt. They might, they probably would have scored because there would have been no defender back to stop him. Saka's burning that whole team if he's getting past Kilini there. So he pulled him down and he took a yellow. Like, you know what I mean? In extra time. It's a smart foul. It was a good play. Like, that's what you sh- honestly should do. If you're, if you're uh, like, smart like he is, like, that's that was the... If you if you look at, like, what's all the possible things that I can do as Chiellini to, to benefit my team right now, that's the play. Like, you know what I mean? That's the play. And to, to me, people people are angry about that, but to me, that's the same thing as, like, taking someone down with a slide tackle or, or, or like, body checking them out of the pitch or whatever you do to take a foul that <clears throat> you know is a foul and it's an intentional foul, you know? It's like in ball, right? Like in ball, if someone's going for the hoop and that basket's about to, like, you know, yeah, win, the, you win them ma- the game, you you're ma- going to slap you, the shit out of their hands to you stop them. You mentioned slide tackle and, <clears throat> and, and, and shoulder. Both these plays are for the ball. Yeah, but so are Jer- Jersey Tugs are fighting the game, bro. Like, people yeah, pull the jersey all the time. Yeah, but he didn't play for the ball. Bro, like... No, bro. A slide tackle, an intentional slide tackle for a foul is not a play for the ball. You're intentionally fouling them because they're already past you and you're just going to take out their legs. So, you, bro, don't tell me people don't do that. How many times has someone had a run? They kick the ball far in front of them so they're about to chase it down and then the defender slide tackles the fuck out of them. That's not a play for the ball. Yeah, but no, his intention is to go for the ball. No, bro. I'm literally talking about when someone tackles someone not for the ball just to take them out. That happens so, all the time. So... So that play does not have the ball. Just a random guy just comes up to him and, and no, bro. I'm him. saying like he pushed the ball forward. The ball is okay. gone at this point. Like they're still okay. both standing. The ball. He's chasing down the ball. He's gonna win uh, the race, and then he slide tackles him and takes his legs out. 
Where did that's you a play see for that? a ball? You're saying Where that you... doesn't happen, bro? No, no, but when did you see it? I mean, I can't give you a perfect, uh, 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 an but example I... right now, bro. Like, fam, I can't think of an example on the top fam, of my head, but fam, I've seen it happen. Have, you have to say, you have to say and admit that that play was not to be in a soccer game. Like that's just that's just that's just what it is, bro. He was getting fucked up right there. Bro, there. he got a card. That's 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 what you sh- should get for a play that shouldn't be you're, in a soccer s- game, as you say. Y- like saying, I see Jersey Suggy, fam. He got a card. He got the punishment that you should get for wait, that play. You're saying you're saying is that worth a yellow or red? Realistically speaking, I don't know. I don't know. Like like if they gave him a red, like would I be surprised? No, but it's definitely worth a card. Like you know what I mean. I, I don't know. Some people were like, I was reading some comments online. Some people were saying like, if you think that's a red, you need to watch some Copa America. And then like, when you put it that way, I'm like, shit, that's kind of facts. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If you watch some Copa America, like, they don't play soft out there. They play rough. Yeah, they play my guy rough literally tough. just yanked the fuck out of. I mean, bro, bro literally, he, regardless. He's nineteen, bro. I get that, he's bro. 19, I get that, bro. bro. Regardless, he's if, a baby. Bro. I get that, bro. So what, bro? You playing on the international stage? This shit's for like all the marbles. Shit. And your age, like, your age don't fucking matter. This shit's yo, for a trophy. You gotta be nice, bro. Like, no, shit. what the fuck? I want my trophy. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you're nineteen. I'm thirty six. I might not get a chance to win another trophy. Of, you got another chance. Of course, chance. Of course Man, that's why you yank it. Listen, bro. Listen, if that was a yellow or a red, it don't matter. I would still say smart play because, like, it's extra time. Like, you're 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 saving a goal at that point. You know what I mean? It's a smart play. It's a smart foul. Call it dirty. Call it, like, shitty. Call it, like, not a football play. Call it whatever the fuck you want. Regardless of mm-hmm. what you say, it's a smart play. That's it. Right. It's the smartest thing that he could have done in that moment, and that's that. <laughs> and, like, like... You know, that's it. <laughs> I don't. I see yeah. that the same as a slide tackle to take someone's legs out, or or like a, yeah. a shoulder check to take someone out of their play. I see that the same way. It's like it's an aggressive play that they did on purpose to stop someone from executing their play, and they get yeah. usually they'll get a card for that. That's why there's fouls in football. Like you know what I mean? It's not like Chiellini did that expecting not to get a card or get a foul, right? So. Yo, fam, he was literally about to get scored on, I swear, bro, I swear. Exactly. And that's why he did that. Yeah, I swear, bro. <laughs> How many times are going to say, he, yeah, yes, I, I agree, he was going to get scored on, and that's why he did that. That's why he did that. That's why he did that. That's why it's a smart yeah, that's play. A, that's, that's why so it's a smart dumb, play. Bro. Listen, you know why it's a smart play? We won at the end of the day. If they scored in that on that play, we would have lost. That's why it's a smart play. There you go. So, anyways, enough on that. We spent a good amount of time on that. Yeah, so, <laughs> hey. Um, but anyway, so that happened in extra time. The pull downs. Um, I thought Italy was still doing their thing in extra time. They still held more possession, but we were getting a little bit close. Um, Mancini out coached the fuck out of the what's that guy's name? 100%. Southgate. I don't bro, even know, bro. But he disappointed me too big time. Out coached the shit out of that guy. Yeah, out coached the fuck out of that guy. Harry mm-hmm. Kane should have been off that pitch super early once they saw Kane was dealing with him. Put some put Rashford in there or something. Get some pace against those older defenders, cause, bro, I didn't see Harry Kane win a header against Chiellini until extra time. The bro, whole not, game. Harry Kane didn't take a single shot today, bro. The whole he didn't game, take a single shot. Lock the off. The whole game, and Sterling too. They kept <laughs> that guy locked down too. Well, yeah. was dealing with Sterling, bro. No exactly. problem. Like no problem with those guys. Like their their biggest threat was like. Whoever the other players were that were open on the attack, either Mount, yeah. like Mount looked more threatening than Sterling and Kane. Yeah, Mount, that Mount had like, a lot of touches, but he didn't do nothing with his touches. That was his well, issue, the whole bro. England team team didn't do shit tonight, bro. Like, yeah, but he, he had. Yeah, but Mount had touches where like I feel like he could do something from that point, and then as soon as he touched the ball, Di Lorenzo was either on his, like there was someone on his ass at all times. Oh yeah, bro. Was always, shout out yeah. also shout out to both fullbacks because like. Going into this game, that was what me and KB were out here saying were the weak links because we lost Florenzi and uh, and uh, Spinazzola uh, in yeah. this tournament. And those were big losses for us, right? Those are our starting fullbacks gone. And Emerson, like the game didn't start off well for him because that goal was partially his fault, the first goal. But shit, bro, the rest of the game, the way that these guys were playing possession and Emerson was getting involved in the attack, which was impressive because that's what Spinazzola did. And that's kind of why I think they started working again. Because once he started getting involved in the attack, they were kind of, they were allowed to play the same style they played. Um, 
more That's options and share more space and shit. Shout out to Boone, uh, to, to Immobile for still being shit on the national stage. Thank God for him. His team actually did something, you know. That's crazy. Like, this guy wants something. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Bro, like, for that guy for the national team is not the same player, bro. <laughs> like, he does not show up. He does not appear. Insigne, though, <laughs> he did his thing. He did his thing. Yeah, yeah he had a good tournament. You think that's his last one? Nah. He's like, what is he, 28, 29? He still should still be good for a bit. He'll yeah, just be yeah. a vet. He might, I, I don't know if he'll play wing in the future, though. Maybe he'll be like a cam or something. Uh, yeah, he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to change his game, though, because I'm fucking getting slow and he's small. Like, yeah. And I'm like, he's 30, bro. Yeah. I mean, he's still got, bro, the World Cup is around the corner. He'll still be on the team. Bro. Yeah, he'll be on right. And the thing is, is Borussia and Chiellini going to be on the team probably next summer is going to be World Cup, no? Yeah, that's exactly it, yeah, man. That, that's when, that's that's when the real awesome. big dogs are. We get football back to back. Yeah, Years, that's sure. lit. I just um, need to figure, yo, we have to figure out, we have to figure out where, where it is. Huh? Do you, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Motherfuckers are honking right now. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? <laughs> the whole city going crazy right now, bro. <laughs> You know what we do. Holy you know boy, what we bro. do, bro. We, That's crazy. You know, we, we play that sport, bro. We play that sport. Um, But yeah, anyways. We gotta get to the end of this game already. So, yeah. Southgate outcoached like a bitch. Like, like, honestly, I'd be ashamed. I'd be ashamed. He's not coming back. He's done. I, I, I hope not. But then again, like with England, England, man, they, they, need, they need more than just a coach. I don't think it's a coach. Harry Kane is also not it, bro. I don't think Harry Kane is it. I don't like, know. Yeah. yeah, but like that's the thing. If Harry Kane's not it, you got other options. You can play that team however the fuck you want, bro. Yeah, you can well, play, yeah, bro. You true. can interchange every position with something yeah. else, except yeah, for maybe their center backs, like Maguire and Stones. I don't think you're going anywhere with those guys. But you could replace the mids. You could replace the fullbacks. You could replace, even though those fullbacks should probably still be starting. You could replace the striker, bam. Yeah. You could replace the wings if you wanted to. If you were like, you know what, bro, I don't like Raheem Sterling. I'm going to bring him in off the bench. You could start Sancho. You could start Saka. You know what I mean? I mean like, yeah, he, he did fuck up. He did fuck up. Like not having Harry Kane should have not been playing as soon as they seen they seen you know. Uh-uh. Keeling, no. lock him up. Yeah, they bro. Should, yeah, they had to inject a little pace in there, bro. If anything, yeah, I don't know. Put put Sterling striker. Put Sancho in. I don't know, bro. Whatever you need to do. That's that's why that's not my job and it's yours. But you didn't do a good job, clearly. Mancini had that system on lock this whole tournament. The this whole tournament. whole tournament, that team was on lock. Possession on lock. What a genius this game, too. He left Verratti in because they needed him. Like, Verratti yeah. played a full 90. Verratti played a full 90. Marco Verratti. When's the last time you saw that guy play a full 90? It's been a minute, man. It's, it's been, been a long minute, time. Man. But it was yeah. enjoyable as shit, wasn't it? Fact. Wasn't it? Man, Fact. that guy would be surrounded with like three players. Beautiful pass. Beautiful little touch. The whole team, actually. The whole Italian team, the way that they were passing that ball, the interplay was like... I was shook. I don't think, I don't players think off the bench. Played, I don't think anybody played bad except for Silva, to be honest with you. Well, like, he didn't even play bad. It's just he didn't get his touches either. He, he just, he he just didn't... Well, he had like one good strike. Remember that was blocked? Remember that one? The yeah, one where yeah. they crossed it in the box and he got blocked by the defender? That was yeah. a really good strike, but like, also the balls into him are sh- were kind of shit. To be fair, to be fair like, to Silo, he wasn't yeah. getting good balls. Like, like people exactly. kept talking about that Insigne Immobile connection the whole tournament. Like, I don't know what the fuck connection y'all talking about. Like, I <laughs> I saw the Immobile Spinazzola connection. You told connection. me the same thing too, <laughs> bro. I, told thing. I told you that at the beginning because I because yeah. that's what I was hearing. You know, that's that was the what people were talking about. I guess through uh, the. The, the friendlies that they have before, whatever, like the, yeah. the pre qualify qualifiers, whatever those are, like to get yeah. into the tournament, like they must have been been playing well together. But from what I saw this tournament, Insigne and Immobile didn't look like, I looked like they were connecting well. Like I thought Insigne's best player that he had was Spinazzola. I thought Spinazzola and, and Insigne played really well off each other. Chiesa was his own monster. Like he don't need nobody. That guy could do it all by himself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so... Back to extra time. Uh, other than that pull down, nothing too crazy. Like, you know, a lot of mostly Italy just holding possession but not being able to create anything. I think they were happy to go to Pens. Yeah. Um, so we headed to Pens, and I was, me and KB were already kind of out here, like, yo, I think we think Italy's got that. You know, they're better. Yeah, Usually definitely. the team with the better keeper gets the dub, you know? Yeah. And like Pickford's little, like, honestly, I don't think he's world class whatsoever. I think he's just the best guy that they could put in the net. That's my opinion. But. Hey, man, he made a couple saves. 
in the in the penalty shootout, uh, and a lot of controversy came from the last shooter for England. So before we get to that. Um, you know, Italy was on the ropes for a little bit because I think Piffer had a save, and um, and then it was looking like, oh shit, we're in trouble. <coughs> we mm. needed a save from Donnarumma to get us back in. Yeah. Um, and then who was the first to miss? Was it Rashford? Rashford missed. First, yeah. Rashford missed and Sancho missed. Another like this coach literally put them in with three minutes left in extra time. Just yeah. to take the pens and they both. Wait, missed. wait. So so Rashford missed, Sancho missed, and Saka missed. No, one of them has no, to no, score. No, 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 no. Saka, Saka got saved. Um, Rashford hit the post. Rashford hit the post. Sancho got saved. Got stopped. Really? Damn. Yeah, they lost. They lost. That that because Italy missed two, right? Italy, mm. Italy got Pickford stopped two. Donnarumma mm. basically stopped three, but one of them was uh, he hit the post. Mm. Rashford. Shit. Um, this guy put this guy put Rashford, Rashford and Central on the pitch to hit penalties and they both missed. Yeah, bro, it's a bad look. And like, I don't oh, think anyone's imagine. upset at Saka, bro. He's nineteen, bro. Like, you put like what what a dumbass decision as a coach. How do you put Saka, nineteen year old, to take the fifth shot to to not to win it to keep you alive? Like literally to keep you in the tournament, not to win it to keep you alive. That's a lot of pressure yeah. for a 19 year old, especially because Donnarumma. Donnarumma, yeah, like Donnarumma, that guy's next, bro. I'm telling you, that's the next best keeper on the planet. He's coming. He's coming. Now he's going to PSG with a lineup like that in front of him. <laughs> with a lineup oh, like man. that in front of him, bro. Yeah. He li- Look what he did with Italy. Like, Italy's nice, but shit, compared to PSG. PSG. Like Marquin- Marquinhos and Sergio Ramos? Fam, this guy's gonna have Marquinhos, Sergio Ramos Shit. in front of him, bro. He's barely gonna have to make any saves, and when he does, it's Donnarumma. You know, you know, as long as you give him a chance to save it, that's all yeah. Chiellini and Bonucci were doing. Like, you know, they mm. set him up basically to get a, a save that he could stop. You know, as long as it's not like him and the, him and a player, even with him and a player, bro. I'm trusting that guy. Like, you know what I mean? I'd rather have him yeah. than most other keepers on the planet. Like, I'm trying to think, like, Allison, like. You know what I mean? Allison, I'd rather have. Like, Ederson's nice, too. Like, you know. O'Black. O'Black. Um, the, the O'Black's not talked about enough, the though. Uvent, the That's Juventus it. keeper, just again, uh, or whatever. Or, yeah. yeah. Him. Is, is that him? Yo, Navas for PSG was underrated, too. I kind of feel bad that he's getting kicked out when he did his thing. Uh, is he going to end up leaving, or he's just going to stay on the bench? I mean, if I'm them, I'm transferring him. I need that money. I already have a new starter. He's too good to be on the bench. Yeah, well, they better have they better have someone else. That's for sure. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how that's gonna go. Is Sirigu still there? I think Sirigu was their backup. Sir, I haven't seen Sirigu on a pitch in like years, bro. Yeah, I think he's still there. I think he's still on their bench. Um, but no, yeah, he man. plays with Torino, but whatever. Oh no way! Oh, he went yeah. back to Serie. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we go to Pens. Saka gets saved. Let's come into Rome. It's coming to Rome. So. <laughs> That's all I got to say on that one. We did our thing. We did our thing. I'm very happy. Especially, you know, what a story, man. Like, this is a very memorable run for me as an Italian fan. For one, it was much more exciting than other football I've watched this national team play. You know, we were very used to playing very defensive, score one goal, park the bus type of deal. Um, but... They were they were the attackers. This they were yeah, the team facts. that was putting the pressure on the other team. Every game they played to score. Like you know, they never played to to play defense. Like they, yeah. they obviously they played great defense. You're gonna have great defense with two vets like that on the back end. But the but the the goal they always pushed the ball up the pitch. They always pushed the play. Losing, winning it didn't matter. They always pushed the ball up the pitch. Which, like, they were always in control. There was always man. That's all Mancini though. That that's where he needs the most credit for sure. He, bro, he's the manager of the tournament. Like he is yeah, for sure. manager most of the definitely. tournament. Like it's not most not even comparable. There's not a single manager you could compare to this guy. No one's close. Yeah, no. No yeah. one's close. He's he's on another level with the team. Cause yeah, Italy like their system blah 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 was good. But the reason why nobody thought they were gonna be good going into the tournament is cause the players, like yeah, they're good. Like now we bro like Mancini sh- showed us. Like he showed us what we overlooked he showed yeah. it to us bro like bro Chiesa 
What a fucking tournament. Spinazzola. That guy, people are going to say Luke Shaw. Nah, I think Chiesa was the best fullback in the tournament, bro, until he went down. Sorry, Spinazzola was the best fullback in the tournament until he went bad. Down. Chiesa, arguably one of the best wingers, bro. That guy was single-handedly going out there and creating scoring chances by himself. If the side was open, if the side was open and if Chiesa had the ball by himself and there was like four, five defenders from the other team, me and Killian were standing up. Why are we standing up for? Because we know mm-hmm. somehow, some way, he's going to shred through them and, and curl a shot on, bro. That he's guy, a problem, he that stole guy. a starting position. Berardi, mm-hmm. don't forget, Berardi was the starting right wing to start the tournament and Chiesa stole that shit. And we were all, we from, from the jump, me and this guy were saying Chiesa should start, bro. We've been loving that kid. He's fucking, he's something, that guy. Uh, like, he showed us like Pessina off the bench. Like, who the fuck is that? What a yeah, turning. Bro. Locatelli off the bench, who, who covered for Verratti until he came back for like the last game of qualifiers from injury. Like, Locatelli, what a what like what a tournament for him too. Like, like yeah, he didn't show out as much in these in the round of sixteen. Verratti did his thing, but in those mm. qualifying games, he did his thing, bro. He scored a brace. Like, bro, B- Barella, like damn, bro, like like. Towards the end of the tournament, not as great, but like shit, he had a great tournament too. Like that whole team, that whole lineup, and even their bench, bro. Yo, Bernardeschi, this was his best game. That's my this man, was his best yo. game. The free That's kick he man. took this game. Yo, the free kick, tick, kick he took this game was nice. It was nicer than whatever Insignia did. Like you know, yeah. That's Insignia my had a great man, tournament bro. too. Like like that whole team, like he showed us, he showed us like. We all know, we all know Insigne, we all know Immobile, we all know Verratti, and we all know, like, Chiellini and Bonucci, and, like, if, you should know Donnarumma, but, like, if you didn't, well, now you know. Everybody else, I know. everybody else, all the other positions, like, like, people would have doubted those players, and now, like, coming out of this tournament, you're like, yo, like, especially Chiesa and Spinazzola, those two, like, Chiesa and Spinazzola, Shit, yeah, they turned out. Well, we'll, turned we'll out. see. We'll see how Spinazzola's injury goes. But like, Kiesa, bro, like that 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 motherfucker's gonna get money, bro. When that, if they keep playing like this and the contract comes up, and like mm. Spinazzola, like I don't know if he's gonna stay. I think he's on Rome. I don't know if that guy's staying on Rome like I'm much longer with a performance like that. If he heals up, I could see a top team buying him. Kiesa, bro, like the way Juventus is looking, bro, like you need to get the fuck off that squad. Like go yeah, play. No, that guy's a winger who could play in any any league, any league. Kiesa, Kiesa. Kiesa. Oh, hundred percent. Kiesa. He's the perfect winger. He's exactly what you need: pace and hard yeah. work. That's it. That's all I want. Yeah. That's all yeah. I want. That's all I need. And bro, underrated striking. Re- really underrated striking. Like I, he shocked me. He shocked that guy. Shocked me. This tournament. Yeah, like bro. I knew he was pacey. I knew he worked hard. But I didn't know he could put balls on net like that. Like that guy hits the target, bro. Um, Yo, fam, how how old do you think Kiesa is? What is he? 20, 28, no? Fam, he's 23. Oh, shit, he's young as hell. Damn. What are you talking... Bro, you had me shook it. Bro, I he's thought... He's 23. I thought he was old, bro. I thought he was old. I thought he, I thought he, he's been through it for a bit. Fam, he's about to dominate. Oh, oh my damn, That makes me goodness. a lot more excited for him than 23. That's crazy. Uh, Fam, he's 23. He's a 97. What? Damn. He's in... He's in 97. Damn. He about to do his thing. Uh, he about to do his thing. Shit. Shit. He, I hope shit, he leaves Juventus, shit. though. He needs to go play for, like, a like a squad, you know? I, Where do you think he's going to go? I don't think... I don't see him leaving Italy, to be honest with you. I know, bro. But, like, I don't know. If Ronaldo's leaving Juventus, and, like, bro, that team's kind of stripped down a little bit, you know? Like, that team's... Uh, like, you know, they're... they're, they're I mean, all they really need a is a striker, bit. I mean, all they really need is a Well, striker. I mean, hopefully they get a good amount of money for Ronaldo. Like, they need, like, a good fee. Um, Pogba should go back. <laughs> but, like, I don't know, man. looking kind of decent now. But, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Just, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. They just got Sancho, them motherfuckers. <laughs> Shout out to Italy for winning that. Uh, footy. I don't even want to stop talking about footy. It's just been such a... Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. It's a beauty. It's been such a pleasure. Beauty. But, unfortunately, we're going to have to... Nah, I'm just kidding. Not unfortunately. We're going to have to hop into uh, some uh, NBA, some basketball. So, uh, uh, take us away, Mr. KD. <coughs> I need some water. 
Oh, you're thirsty? Too yeah, much been, Lillian, yeah. I've been talking too much, you know? Too much Yo, too bro, talking. by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, I want pasta, bro. Like, Italy dub, and I don't, I, I want pasta. <laughs> I just have to say that, bro. I'm sorry. I feel bad for you, bro. It's unfortunate. Yo, me and KB were watching yeah. the game together. Yeah. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, pasta was not on the menu today, but usually yeah. Sunday's pasta day. So I feel yeah. bad for you. That was not my decision. That was the other, uh, the other Martin the, Child. The upper court. Yeah, the, the, the upper the, court. The, the other Martin Child, the, the the queen of the household, she made that decision, unfortunately. So, so that's not my call. I'm executive. Sorry. The executive. That was an executive <laughs> decision. I'm only I'm I'm at the bottom of the totem pole in this house, bro. Like, uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyways, bro, bro we have so we have sauce and and ground veal, like literally taken off the stove, put to the side. It was ready to go, like you know, but. It's what time is it? It's nine o'clock. I haven't even eaten today yet. Like uh, it's a, uh, I don't know what's going on, bro. I, you, I'm gonna find out right after this. I'm gonna find out what I'm eating. Maybe I'm eating toast. <laughs> like I don't know. But anyways, let's hop into some NBA, bro. Oh my god, Phoenix. NBA finals, man. NBA finals, man. Phoenix Suns in Milwaukee. I'm so mad that we didn't um like make a prediction on this because like you know it kind of sucks. But didn't I say Phoenix? I don't know if I said games, but I'm pretty sure I said Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if we talk prediction, we want to say games and like you know, like Phoenix. But yeah, I got we got. You said you got Phoenix. I got Phoenix, right? Yeah. All right, man. All right. Well, Phoenix been showing up. Game one, they fucking dominated. I don't have the final score exactly. Fuck, I'm kind of mad. But it was a showdown, man. This guy Chris Paul, Chris Paul, D Book, and Aiton on the same team is not fair. It, it's not fair at this point. It's it was just, a combo. Yo, it's just like. Chris Paul can actually score the ball. When he needs he to. He can score the ball. When yeah, he when he to. needs to, he can score the ball. And it's just, I wasn't I wasn't expecting that from him, to be honest with you. I was expecting Booker to, like, carry all the way and do his thing and this, that, whatever. But right now, if someone has, if Phoenix wins, uh, Chris Paul has to take that MVP. Chris oh, Paul has definitely. To take that MVP. definitely. Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Definitely. That's, yeah. that's how we were talking about Chiellini today being commandant chef on his team. That's Chris yeah. Paul on, on, on the Phoenix Suns, bro. Yeah, okay. But, like, on the, on the other hand, like, bro, Drew Holiday, no performance in game one. Game two, he tried to do his thing, but, like, bro, Lui, Lui, like, you're telling game, me about Chris Middleton? Game two, Giannis did his thing, bro. Yeah, but Mal- yeah. Middleton scored less points than Holiday in game two. Yeah, but Middleton has been more consistent than oh, than, than than Holiday overall. Like it's just like bro, and people gotta show up. And right now, I mean, now we're talking about this. Game three is currently playing, so I don't know how that's going. I think I think Phoenix is up. Oh, it started when it started at eight. Yeah. Oh damn. So we'll have to catch that after this. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, like I I I don't I want Phoenix to win, but I want it to be a good series. Like right now, it's looking like Phoenix can actually sweep these guys, and I don't want that shit to happen. I mean, game like, two, game two sucks because Giannis dropped forty two. He did everything in his power to get them that dub, and they still lost. Facts. That's what I'm saying. Like that, that's crazy. I right, bro, make a prediction for tonight. Then it should be easy one. The game is already what like forty five minutes in. What are they in the second quarter? Yeah, second quarter about to start right now. All right, bro, make your prediction for tonight's game. Are the Bucks taking it? <laughs> no, nah, I mean Phoenix is taking that. They're going up P zero, bro. <laughs> you're thinking, you're saying Phoenix sweep. I'm saying Phoenix in five games. Uh, I'm I'm feeling that Phoenix in five or six. Yeah, feels like the yeah, like, gut saying. Like before the series, I would, before the series started, I can't relate to you. I would have said like Phoenix in six, but now I want to say Phoenix in five just because they're so dominant. Like they're absolutely Giannis's dominant. Injury, like, Giannis's injury, like is a, is is a killer too. Yeah, facts. Like DeAndre in last game easily had a twenty and twenty game, bro. And then D Book was pissed at, at Chris Paul because he stole his last rebound. <laughs> but anyways, man. Um, yeah, game three tonight. Game four is in two days. We'll see how that's gonna go. Chris Paul for MVP. D Book's been doing his thing. That's my guy. Yeah. Shout out to Giannis for game two. I feel bad for you, brother. Like you did yeah. your thing, but uh, it looks like the NBA gods, if they exist, are not on your side, my friend. Not I I side. told I told myself if this guy's not getting a championship this year, he's never getting a championship. Nah, you're out of your mind, bro. He's young enough to get another chance. <laughs> Giannis. Yeah. Giannis. Well, yo, the NBA is the only thing still going right now. In fact, NHL champions, they've been crowned. I wish it was the Leafs, but it's not. <laughs> they didn't even make it. <laughs> yeah. But the other Canadian team that beat the Leafs did make it. So, but they didn't win it. 
Lightning Stripes, Tampa Bay. <laughs> Yo, do you know what's funny? So Ta what? Tampa Bay won it in five, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were leading the series 3 nothing going to the game four. Game four was in Montreal. The mayor of Tampa <laughs> came on the news and said, Tampa, let them win the game in Montreal so y'all could come back and win the trophy in Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not saying they threw that game. I'm not saying they threw that game because I don't think they did. But is it not funny in hindsight that, like, she said that? And, like, that's cocky, bro, to be like, yo, let them win a game and then we can come back and win it in five at home so you can win yeah. the trophy in front of the fans. Yeah. She said that and that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what that's they exactly did. That's exactly what they did. No, I don't, I don't care. Now that you said that, they had that shit in their mind. I don't care. I don't care. That's what they did, yo. They had that shit in their mind, bro. Yeah. How, about, how, about did they, how about did they lose that game? Was it a close one? It was a close one. They lost in like OT. Mm. Yeah, they were trying mm. to win that game, bro. They wouldn't fuck around yeah. with that. But uh, yeah, okay. But yeah, man. So Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Lightning champions in five against the Montreal Canadian. Um, hey, man. I think Montreal like. I don't want to say luck, but I think that they they found a hot streak because they had a bad season this year. They didn't play good this year. I think yeah. they found a hot streak we, in the playoffs. We heard that from you. They, 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 <laughs> I think they had a hot streak in the playoffs. And then they, they ran that hot streak for as long as they could. They ran on, like, the goaltending of Carey Price for as long as they could. And then eventually, like, they just faced IMO, the best team in the league. Like, like regardless of them now back being back-to-back -back champions, which is insane. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning there was a time where people were talking about them like yeah most that team that can't win anything and bro three years ago they got swept in the first round by Columbus which was like a like a trash sure. game in comparison to them and then they went on yeah. to win two Stanley Cups back to back which is insane but for Montreal fans honestly like I would take what just happened like you know I would I would if I'm as a Leafs fan I would take the run that you guys just had you should be proud it of was course. a good run it was a tough run you went a lot further than people expected and probably than you should have gone, to be honest. Like, y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all powered through, y'all. I don't know what shout it was. Shut out the leaves, y'all. Shut out the leaves. A, stru a struck of luck, a struck of heat. I don't know what it was. Like, but y'all, y'all, y'all figured out your game and you did your thing. And got yourselves all the way to the finals. But, like, unfortunately, you ran into Tampa Bay. Like, that team is stacked. I just saw uh, Nikita Kucherov, who came back from injury. <laughs> to start the playoffs like his first game of this season was a playoff game because they didn't want to go over the salary cap they kept him on IR he comes back <laughs> this guy's the leading scorer in the, in the playoffs <laughs> coming back off an injury first game in the playoffs insane and I just saw a picture of him online <laughs> he's holding the Stanley Cup and holding uh, the Lombardi trophy like the Super Bowl trophy I think he was hanging out yeah. with the uh, with Tom Brady, Tom Brady. and he's wearing yeah. a shirt that says 18 million over the cap on his on the shirt. He knows what he did. He knows what they wow. did. Like wow. that's a lot. 18 million over the cap. That's that's messed. Like, but hey man, that team stacked head to toe, and clearly eight, being 18 million over the cap, that's what it does. And honestly, man, I won't be shocked if another team uses this formula to get themselves a chip. I won't be shocked. Like, I mean, if a star player is out. Fam, if Austin Matthews gets injured, like, like before the trade deadline next season, you tell him sit. <laughs> you tell him sit to the playoffs. Um, knock on wood, though. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if another team pulls something like that. Um, That's dumb. Yeah, but they'd have to be able to keep up with that, that player. And Tampa Bay was stacking enough to have this guy sit. Yeah. Like, mm. uh, Vasilevsky won um, the Conn Smythe for, for playoff MVP. Well deserved. Yeah. I think he should have won the Vesna for goalkeeper, goalie, best goalie in the league this year, but uh, that went to Flurry. Still don't agree with that, but hey, it's, it was close enough. Uh, but he wins the Conn Smythe playoff MVP as the keeper. Well deserved. He dueled it out with Carey Price. A good duel of the goaltenders, and uh, he took that. So, shout out to Tampa Bay Lightning. Shout out. You can't see it here, but that like middle black frame there is Steven Stamkos. <laughs> so. Shout out to my man Steven Stamkos, been a fan, Markham boy, um, and yeah, man. Shout out to Tampa Bay Lightning. But I want to talk about like two little NHL things quick before we move on to uh, UFC 264. 
One, we had a trade actually happened on uh, was it the first? I don't know. We might have. We, I think we might have missed it on some previous episodes. I'm not too sure. Maybe like, but it happened fairly recently. Uh, Victor Arvidsson. You don't know him, but he's like a pretty good score on Nashville. Young player mm. traded to the LA Kings for a second and third round pick. Um, a bit of a payment, but like not too yeah. big of a payment. Good deal. Like, like LA, LA. You know that that team that won two trophies in the span of three years. Back in the early two twenty tens, like that team don't exist anymore. Those vets are old. That team needs to rebuild, and you know, trading some picks is tough because you would want those picks for your rebuild, but you're getting a good player out of it and a player who's still young. So, um, shout out to Victor Arvidsson. Hopefully, you can go to LA and show out. Um, also, Vladimir Tarasenko trade rumors regarding him. Um, KB, I don't, so he he plays for. Uh, the St. Louis Blues. He was on the cover of NHL 17, actually. Um, sure. Really good goal scorer, Russian player. Um, the thing with him, though, is that he's had way too many injuries lately. Um, mm-hmm. Excuse me. And he came back this year and had an okay year after being injured last season. Um, I don't know if his days are numbered or what or what's going on with him or if they're going to get any value from him because, like, there was a time where this guy was a superstar and he's still young enough to be one. But, um, you know, injuries have ruined his career and marked his career. And it's kind of just like, I don't know. If you trade him now, are you really getting value? I don't know if it's him who wants out. I think it might be him who wants out out of the team. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't know what what value you're going to get for him. But, hey, man. I wouldn't be surprised if some playoff contender picked this guy up and all of a sudden he he, he rejuvenated his career again, pulled a Blake Griffin on us. So um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Tarasenko, wish the best for you, man. Um, but let's move on to some UFC 264. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my Lord. Honestly, um, pretty crazy night. There's two fights specifically I want to talk about. I'm just going to go over the other ones briefly. So... I want to talk about, yeah. obviously, the, Sh- the Sean O'Malley versus Chris Moutinho fight and the Dustin Poirier versus McGregor fight. Those are the two fights I think are, like, like highlights. But I want to give a Chris, quick shout-out to Irene Aldana. Uh, she faced Yana. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name. I think they were fourth and fifth in the in the bantamweight division, women's bantamweight. And Irene Aldana pff, wrecked her. Wrecked her. Like, Yana, Yana, that girl got... <laughs> that girl was mm-hmm. bloody... <laughs> Like, that, that fight was domination. So, shout out to Irene. Maybe we'll see some great things from her in the bantamweight division. Uh, and then we got Ty, Ty Tuvisa versus Greg Hardy, the ex-football player. Um, I remember Greg Hardy going in, trying to get the kill, and Ty Tuvisa <laughs> caught him with a caught him with a, I think it was a right hook. Right hook, to the, right hook to the head. Knocked Sounds him out, like and then this guy yeah. goes, and drinks out of, goes and drinks out of people's shoes and shit, bro. Like, disgusting. Absolutely, just people. Please don't do that. A shoey and stuff. It's not cool. It's not. It's not elegant. <laughs> like it's. It's. Yeah, you wouldn't do it. Are you insane? Never. How much? How much would I? How much would I have to pay you for you to do that? How many? Nah, nah, nah fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. How many? How many subscribers <laughs> do we need on this? How many subscribers do we need on this for you to do that? <laughs> you know what's funny? Let's go, man. Yeah, it's good, bro. <laughs> Two million, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go buy a new pair of shoes and then I'll drink it out of that. That's not a problem. I'll drink it out of a brand new pair of shoes for for two million subs for any money. I'd do that. That's not an issue. But I'm not drinking no no beer out of some dirty shoe, bro. Like this guy's this guy's taking shoes from people from the crowd and drinking beer out of it. Disgusting. Oh my God. Disgusting. Like gross, bro. Gross. Gross, man. Like that's your celebration. I don't fuck with you, Tai Tuvasa, bro. Like what the fuck? Keep that nasty shit away. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> disgusting. But hey, man, shout out to you for getting a dub round one KO one minute into the round. Pretty crazy. Uh, then we got Gilbert Burns versus Stephen Thompson. I was excited for this fight. But, you know, not much went on. Stephen Thompson didn't get to get his strikes in there. Gilbert Burns took his ass to the ground and dealt with him. Um, yeah. And won by decision. That the, That's all there really is to say about that. But let's get to first fight of the night and last fight of the night, the two fights I actually really want to talk about. Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean O'Malley, one of my favorite fighters in the game right now, versus Chris Moutinho, some guy they just picked up off the street. No joke. 
<laughs> like mm-hmm. some fighter, it was his first fight in the UFC. He had to go up against Sugar Sean O'Malley, and uh, oh, you 11, know what, man? Eleven days notice. Eleven days notice. Yeah, Don't eleven days that. notice. Something like that. And yeah. I mean, like you got you got absolutely destroyed. But shit, mm. man! Shout out to you for standing in there and walking mm. forward and showing right. some good heart and taking 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 punishment. Punishment yeah. to like actual abuse. <laughs> it was messed up. They could probably could have called that fight earlier, but they called it with like a minute left in the fifth round, which I thought was kind of wrong. It's like if you're if you're if you were gonna call it like call it earlier, if like at that point it's like he's almost at the end at the finish line. Let the kid get his like you know his his yeah. all the way to a decision in the UFC. Pretty impressive start. Sugar Sean like tore him up, but hey man, at least he stood there, stayed in there, took it, uh, kept walking <laughs> forward and did his thing. Um, yeah. Even though he didn't land that many strikes, man, that was that was a messed up fight. It could be like the, the I yo surprisingly, fam. Surprisingly, I didn't think I like I thought he was gonna he was gonna drop like earlier. Oh, like, bro, I really, so did I. I, I, I think we all yeah, thought like that. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think he was gonna last that long, bro. Like especially when they mentioned the eleven day notice thing. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? This guy is not ready. How's he taking shots from this guy? You know? Yeah, bro. Like, you know. I mean, that's going to be bad for him later on in his career, though. Like, you know, that's... Just, I, I feel like he's not going to last that long either, bro. Yeah, bro, man. Sugar Sean was teeing off on him like he was like a... Like a... What's it called? A like, punching bag, bro. Yeah, but like those punching dummies that are shaped like humans, you know? Like those punching <laughs> bags that are shaped like a person that they just like kick the head and stuff. Like, he was... Bro, this guy was launching combos. He was like... He was like... Yeah. Like a right hook, left hook, jab, spin kick to the yeah. head, bro. And it's like, damn. And like... <laughs> and like, Montino was pissed that they called the fight. I would be pissed too, bro, because at that point, he's, he, bro, they called it, like, when did they call it? Hold on. They called that mm. shit, bro, like, bro, four minutes, about- four minutes and 33 seconds into the third round of three rounds. Yeah. 30 seconds and this fight would have been done. Like, bro, give him his 30 seconds and let him yeah, at least finish like- on his feet, get his, like, you know, like, like, don't call it, because now it's a, a KO, TKO, so, so, so technically it's a technical knockout, it's a technical knockout for Sean O'Malley. He got technical mm. knockout right so Mm -hmm. but if it went all the way to a decision it's like damn you went to a decision in your first fight like a a first fight against a star like sean o'malley like you know so bro give him his last 30 seconds man like come on but hey and now like talking about the 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 last fight the fight this 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 card was built around for you versus Mm -hmm. mcgregor just thinking about thinking thinking about this fight, I'm already in pain, bro. Like just talking about it, I'm already in pain. Yeah, like, like pain. so so so, McGregor ended up breaking his tibia like towards the end of round one. The round was almost finished. Uh, I think I think they made it to the end of round one actually. Yeah, so they made it yeah, to the yeah, end yeah. of round one. Right when the bell rang, he broke his he around then he broke his thing, his uh, his tibia right above the ankle, uh, I think left leg. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So. What people are speculating is either like on the leg kicks that McGregor was launching, or on a leg on a on a kick check from Dustin Poirier, or even from Poirier's kicks. Like some point in between there, like something shattered in his leg, and then when he when they were fighting and he came back and landed, like tried to lean back on his back leg. That's when it snapped, mm-hmm. but it was broken yeah. beforehand. Like you know, like something uh. was cracked beforehand. Yeah, but um, fucking McGregor. When McGregor went down, he was like, he was like, oh, bro, I tell them it was a doctor stoppage. This guy wanted to keep going, bro. No, 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 no. The reason why he was saying like doctor stoppage, like you know, cause he he wanted it to like you know be be not him who 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 got like taken out. I think I think he was trying. It was more about a record thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, uh, okay, the, maybe. That yeah, sense. I think it was more. I think it was more of a record thing versus him. Like, so I think, I think, I think he was hoping that it was gonna be like a no contest or something because of the doctor yeah. stoppage. But it ended that's up fun. being a KO TKO anyways. So I think that's why he was arguing that. I think, but yeah. like, don't like. That makes you know, sense. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, so but either way, bro. Like, first of all, that was like it, it was a great first round, bro. Then they were going at it like. The Dustin mm. Poirier was launching some elbows on that guy on the floor, and so was so was McGregor. But like honestly, like Dustin Poirier won that round, bro. And like I thought Dustin Poirier was winning the fight going into it. At least from the one round we saw, like he looked like he was beating McGregor that one round. And McGregor, we know yeah. we know that McGregor is his best in the first <laughs> round. So if he lost the first round, what's he really doing after that? I'm not yeah. saying McGregor would have lost regardless, but it kind of looked like 
the fight was already going in Dustin Poirier's favor after yeah, round one. Big. Exactly. Um, and now Dustin Poirier is going to go on to fight the champion, and then McGregor, I don't think he's going to get his rematch anytime soon. I think he needs to build his way back up. He just lost to Poirier twice in a row. Like, I don't think he deserves another rematch against Poirier again. Um, yeah, no. So, and he, like, he, he broke his leg, bro. Do you really think he's going to come back? Do you think we're going to see this guy again? Um, I mean, like, I would hope that if you talk shit like that, like, you, you, you come back and back it up. You know what I mean? Like, because uh, yeah. the way I, the way I look at it, I just think he, I just feel like he should take a break, bro. Like at this point, you need. Oh, to he's gonna be out for just, he's gonna be out for a yeah. while. Like he'll be out for a year yeah. easy. He'll be out for yeah. a year easy. But like you know, Dustin Poirier is gonna go on to face Charles Oliveira for the belt. Um, that's gonna be. A good you think fight. he can beat him? Charles Oliveira, yeah, yeah, he can beat him. Dustin Poirier is a Dustin Poirier is a vet, bro. Like he's a legend in this game. All he needs is that belt to solidify his legacy, bro. Like. Mm. This guy's this guy's resume is nasty. He beat Max Holloway. He beat Justin Gaethje. Like he's beat McGregor twice. Like he's got a nice resume, bro. This guy's got a nice mm. resume. Um, yeah. You know, like sure. the only reason he's probably not a champion already is because Khabib Nurmagomedov. Sorry, my God, my bad. I'm messing up that last name. But uh, Khabib was in the was the division champ, and nobody was dealing with that guy. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, man. I mean, good card. Like, most of the fights were good, other than, like, the Gilbert Bringers and uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson wasn't a great fight. And then, obviously, you know, you don't want that McGregor fight. That's, like, what you paid for to, to end with him breaking his leg. But, like, you yeah, know, for sure. that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. Um, wow. That was kind of <laughs> no pun intended, I guess. Um, evil. <laughs> evil. I wasn't trying to be Absolutely evil. evil. It was just, a, you know, conversation. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, shout out to Dustin Poirier. Go ahead and go get yourself that belt, young diamond. Do your thing. Yes, sir. Pro there. We interrupt this programming to let you guys know that Lace Em Up has teamed up with the Jersey Plug, a Toronto-based sports and clothing shop selling high-quality replica jerseys. He's got everything from footy jerseys to basketball jerseys to baseball jerseys, even some cool basketball shorts if you guys are interested you can access his shop using the link in our description below on youtube or wherever you listen to our podcast you can also access our link through our instagram bio if there's anything you want that doesn't appear on the site make sure to give the plug a shout through the contact us tab and let him know lace him up sent you so head on over to the shop and stay plugged in and looking clean so bro let's hop into into the pod bait my friend so this week for the pod yes, bait, sir. just won his international title is he mm-hmm. now the undisputed goat? Is there still an argument there? What's 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 the case, bro? I mean, for me, I don't know. Like for me, the only thing, the only reason why why Ronaldo was ever the goat was because what he won with his international team, right? That's it. That oh, that's yeah, the only I argument guess. we had. Yeah, that's I mean the only that was like the, had, that was the big separator. That was the big separator. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. So that was that so was kind of like like don't even mention Messi's name. You know, like type of deal. Yeah. Now now so I for think. Me, I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, at this at, at this point at this point I feel like it is just it, it, like he is the goal because we already said about how Obama Ronaldo so gifted physically to be doing what he's doing like he's a goal yeah he's great but Messi being who he is like that plays a role into it too like how many Ballon d'Or does he have seven so the difference between them no six I think he's they're, but they're saying he's probably gonna win his seventh this year so the difference between them right now uh, Ronaldo has one more UCL. Mm-hmm. And um, and Messi has one more Ballon d'Or, so that's the difference. Yeah. But Messi might get his seventh Ballon d'Or, so it's two Ballon d'Ors worth more than one Champions League trophy. Mm-hmm. It's two Ballon d'Or worth more than one Champions League. Yeah, most definitely it has to because Champions League is not I just know. is is not just you. Champions League is the whole team, and Ronaldo never know. really played on shit teams. At least yeah, that's, that's what true. I would well, say. Neither than, neither than Messi, but I mean um, Barcelona did go through a whole like what the fuck is going on over there. Yeah. Well, recently, recently, but like the times where yeah. Ronaldo was winning his his championships, Barcelona was also good. You know what I mean? Like that's I'm like when sure Neymar was, was out years, there. You mean? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there were some years where where Barcelona won La Liga, but then Real won Champions League, which is insane. But yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, like, for me, it's kind of like, I think it's still, like, a bit of a debate, but, like, 
I've always like liked Messi more than Ronaldo. I just argued Ronaldo as the goal because like I think he was the goal because of his him winning his championship. I like both of them, but like my most of my life, like I've liked Messi more than Ronaldo. But it's kind of just like yeah, like Ronaldo when when it came down to the goal argument, I would argue against Messi every time because like Ronaldo mm-hmm. had an international championship. So now for me, like. I'm gonna say Messi's the goat because now my bias comes into play and now there's no more international argument against it. But uh, yeah, but yeah, man, like he it's, has. It's close, like you know, it's still close. It's close, like you know, if you argued Ronaldo, like I'd be like, I don't, maybe I don't agree with you, but like I see why, mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like you could say that if you want, like you know, you could say that. It's insane. He has a uh, Messi has six golden boots. Ronaldo has four. Yeah. Oh, he has six golden boots, yeah. So mm. Messi has Messi has four Champions Leagues. Ronaldo has five. Yeah, one more Champions League. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, Shit. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, the thing is, too, is I'm pretty sure, uh, like, Ronaldo has, like, more goals and stuff. But, like, if you go by, like, goals per games played, I think mm. I think uh, Messi has a better better stat. So, um, yeah, yeah, because Messi's, Messi's played less games, right? Messi's younger. Yeah. Um. So, like, honestly, man, I hope Messi goes to, like, leaves Barca, to be honest. Like, I heard that, like, you know, we talked last week about him possibly being a free agent. Uh, hopefully he leaves and he, like, just solidifies mm-hmm. the legacy. Like, you know, I think for him, like, maybe another Champions League and, like, winning because winning, uh, now, because the thing that for Ronaldo, too, another argument for Ronaldo as GOAT is that he won, he won in three major leagues, right? He won a Serie A, he won a mm-hmm. BPL, and he won mm-hmm. Liga. Whereas Messi's only ever won Liga because he's only ever played Liga. Like, that's another mm. thing too, right? Like, that's another feather in Ronaldo's cap against Messi. Like, like yeah. he won in the Premier League. He won in Liga. And, like, he won in Serie A. Like, not during Serie's prime. So, I, that's the argument you could give against him. And, like, honestly, bro, Ronaldo's run with Juventus, he hasn't been great. Like, let's be honest. Like, he hasn't been... Real I mean, it's not, Ronaldo, yeah. You know, but like, I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not the same. Like you know, the age and all that bullshit. Like he I mean, bro, play, you he take the penalties wrong. away from him, and it's like, eesh, eesh. Yeah. <laughs> like the, like he starts looking a lot worse when you take those penalties away from him. And I'm like, I, like I know penalties are part of the game too, but it's like, sheesh. You take, you go through that Juventus tenure, and you take away those penalties. Other than the first season, I think his first season with Juventus was pretty good. But yeah, yeah man, it's because he can't, he can't, he can't really burn anyone on the speed anymore. Yeah, bro, he doesn't have it. I don't think, I don't now. He's got to play up the middle. Yeah, right? Striker okay. purely. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Messi, if he leaves Barca, wins a champion, wins a league somewhere else, maybe gets another Champions League, could be a good look for him. And yeah. He could do that with Man City for sure. Because that's. I feel, I feel like the, Yeah, I mean, they just brought in Suarez, so I don't think he's gonna leave. Yeah. Oh, the, what? Was no, it Suarez? Not Suarez, Aguero. Aguero, Aguero, Aguero. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> they actually kicked what Suarez the fuck? the fuck out. He was not happy about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. They brought in Aguero, so I don't know. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Yeah. I know. That's the yeah. only reason why I'm like, oh, that's my say. But, like, they're saying they can't afford him or something. Like, that might be the case. So, I don't know what's going on. Just, it's rumors we'll for now, but he hasn't signed a contract. So, we'll see. And he wanted to leave yeah. just last summer. So, I don't know why he wants to stay there anyway. Um... Mm. But yo, let's hop into overrated, underrated, my friend. So I'm gonna start yeah. you off. Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> Giannis. Giannis. Shit. Shit. I can. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is Why are you asking me? Is I'm Gian- asking you, is he overrated <laughs> or underrated? Why are you asking me? I think, I'm not, this is not okay. me. This is not my time to shine. It's yours. Okay, but my bad. My bad. To me, Gian- Giannis is probably <laughs> rated, but that's because that's because I don't rate Giannis to be a top five player in the league. Now, if you put him top five in the league, wait, top five in the league? Top I'd five put him top league. five in the league. Yeah? Yeah. KD, LeBron. KD, LeBron, Kawhi, Luka. Kawhi, I'm putting Giannis over Kawhi right now. I'm oh, okay, like right now, recent, recent, but no, like I'd rather have Kawhi than than Giannis. I'm sorry. So yeah, so just because you said that, he's overrated. All right, fine. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, bro. Conor McGregor. 
Over fucking rated. Fuck out of here. You think so? Fuck out of here. Yeah, you didn't bro, watch I've, his prime I, time though. I mean, okay, that's probably two, why. That's two probably why. Like, ah. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him fight three times and he hasn't won. And I'm guessing his last three fights haven't been the best ones because you know he did have uh, a name at that some point. Well, the uh, three fights, the last three fights, he won the first one against Donald Cerrone, and then he Was lost the last three fights. Did I watch that twice? Okay, I don't man, know. I don't know which one you time. watched before. Yeah, the last two. So it's not been the, the highlights of his career. It's it's kind of not yeah. prime, but he's uh, on the downhill. Yeah, he's on the downhill. So right now, yeah. maybe he is overrated. Right now, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I must uh, say that. I have man. Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw's underrated. Are you crazy? Underrated. Come on, bro. Yeah, man. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Why is he underrated? He showed up today. He showed up today, Luke bro. Shaw. He showed up today, bro. And Luke yeah. Shaw was never and Luke Shaw was never on the radar to be one of the top left bikes in the world. You know about that. Went home with a silver mm-hmm. medal though, y'all already know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even, I don't even think he went I don't even think he went home with that shit. He took that shit up and said, Fuck that shit. <laughs> he probably pissed it out. <laughs> nah, but no, but for real though, like he, he showed up today. I mean he not just today, he showed up all tournament. He was solid for them. He was solid and then he did Second the, best fullback of the tournament, for sure. Yeah, most most definitely. Like I don't I, there's not that many players that did play better than him, so yeah, only underrated. Sp- like as a as a fullback, I think only Spinazzola. He was probably second best. Yeah, yeah. Some people will shout say the best. Man. Shout out to Menu Boys, bro. I don't fuck with y'all, but shout out to Menu Boys, man. Alright, bro. And last but not least, Andre Vasilevsky, the Tampa Bay goalkeeper. You got to watch him play quite a bit in the finals. I know you caught a few games. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, from from but, but from what I know of him, I'm going to say underrated because I don't know much of him. But then again, I do, like, the saves that this motherfucker was making, like, if you tell me he's the best keeper in the, in, in the league, I wouldn't be surprised. He was mm. doing his thing. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's all I know from him. Mm. All right, bro. Well, that's the end of the podcast. Forza. Azzurri Italia You know what we do Like, comment, subscribe All that good stuff We'll see you On the next one Take it easy